this is our creator. He has given us life. Our country has been beneficial to us. May have given us certain things, job, etc. But nothing compared to our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more. So if they don't contradict, we have to follow all the rules and regulations. If certain rules and regulations contradict, that particular thing we need not follow. So we have to teach our children to be good citizens also. What's wrong? You should be a good Muslim. So he should follow the rules and regulations as long as it doesn't contradict Islam. As far as history is concerned, of course. What we do, that we see to it, sometimes some history which is not relevant, we don't teach. So then it's at our liberty, we teach the history which is required. In our school, Islamic International School, though it's international school, we have children who are, who are actually British nationals, but they have parents. Parents are also British, maybe the grandparents are Indian, the origin is Indian. So we have students from USA, from British, from Saudi, from other parts of the world. But basically all have got Indian origin, all of them. So you can call them Indians or you can call them many are foreigners. But, but, but we have selected the world history. We have option of taking Indian history or world history. The world history we felt has got more scope for us for doing Dawa. It talks about the lifestyle of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, about Moses, peace be upon him. So it's two in one. So we select the world history. We have two options, world history and history. In world history, part of India also comes. So what is required, we teach. And as far as the government is concerned of that country, we should be very bold. What is right, we have to agree. We can't say, because it's a non-Muslim government, I'm against it. For what? If the policy is against the policy of Allah, we are against it. If it's for, we have to agree. Even if the enemy is, no problem. We have to be bold. That's what Allah says in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 81. Wakul jalak wazakal batil in al batil kana zauka. When truth is all again falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. So we should see to it that in educating, we have to give them even the world history, what's happening in the world, so that when they go out, they should be aware. But some things which may not be relevant, like some things are taught which we feel will not be useful for them, they will never require it in the full life. So that portion we delete. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Brother asked the question that he works in a place which serves food, part of it is halal, part is haram. And the thing to be noted that is it a business which sells food or are you working in a place, an office which serves food for the, uh, for the staff or employees? So is it an office? Uh, you're a shop. Yes, if you're working in a shop which sells haram food and halal food, if the haram food is in a very small minority, you know, maybe the gross turnover, the haram food may be 1% or 2%, then there can be possibilities. But if quite a large portion is haram food, then you should not work in that shop. It's haram. You can't work in an alcohol shop. You can't work in a shop which sells pork. If you're working in a five-star hotel, which has got lodging, boarding, everything, and part, the food is a small portion of the income. And in that food, maybe 50% is haram, then it may be fine working in a five-star hotel with the main income is lodging, boarding, part of it is food. In that part, maybe pork is haram, alcohol is haram, etc. So in that case, it, will be, it may be permissible. But if you're working in a shop which sells only food, and if majority of the food, more than 50% or even quite a large portion, 
25 percent or 20 percent. I mean, there's no percentage per se. But if it's selling haram food and we involve in selling that, then working in that shop becomes haram. Dada. Hope that answers the question. As fast as, as soon as possible, you change your profession. Take a job, inshallah, Allah will give you. Try and find a better job, and that will be better for your risk also and for your akhir also. Yes, sister. Sister has a question that how should we educate ourselves so that we educate others? What should we know basically? But natural knowledge is such a thing that it's a big ocean. But the best book for guidance is the Glorious Quran. I would ask you to read the translation of the Glorious Quran. That's the best. This is the best book of guidance. It is a proclamation to humanity. It is the most positive book in the world. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It is a warning to the heedless. It's a guide to the erring. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. The best book that anyone can read for guidance is the Glorious Quran. I have a question from a non-Muslim sister on the slip. He says, I'm a non-Muslim girl and I'm considering to revert to Islam. But would this mean my God in my religion will punish me? MashaAllah, there's a non-Muslim sister who's, who's thinking of accepting Islam. May Allah give ahidat and we welcome you to the fold of Islam, alhamdulillah. Her main question is that once she accepts Islam, will her God punish her? Sister, in all religions, including Islam, God is only one. There's only one same God for all the human beings. There's no different God for Muslim and Christian and Hindu and Sikh and Judah and Jews. There's one same God. And I've given the talk on concept of God in the major world religions. And all, all the religions say that God is one. He doesn't have any images. He's not begotten. He's all powerful. So the God is the same. So if you accept Islam and all the religions say, if you read most of the major religions, their scripture says that there is a messenger to come whose name shall be Muhammad. Whether you read the Jewish scripture, the Christian scripture, the Hindu scriptures, I don't know whether you're a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu, but whichever religion you belong to, inshallah, most probably, even in your religious book, it will be mentioned God is one. It will be mentioned that there is a messenger to come whose name is Muhammad and he will guide you to the truth, peace be upon him. So even that God, it's the same God, not a different God. If you accept Islam, Islam means submitting your will to God. So inshallah, that God will be very happy and he will reward you. And inshallah, in your next life, he will give you Jannah. Yes, brother. ask the question that everyone will not be fortunate to study in that school so how can people millions of Muslims throughout the world what should they do for children how can they get a similar school and as far as the information of our school yes if you go to our website irf.net in that website you'll say a separate section for Islamic International School you can go there and and you can get the information as far as similar schools there are two options the first option is very easy, that people can come, see our school, whatever cooperation they want we can give, they can come and start in the city, a similar school. But the success is very difficult. For everyone who